Good evening. It's 6 o'clock on Thursday, April 13th, 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, where we bring you today's top stories translated into English every weeknight. Prime Minister Eddie Rama expressed his support of the president's initiative to sit with all the political parties to dialogue. Speaking to journalists after the plenary session, the Prime Minister said that the Democratic Party should not be afraid and should accept this initiative, that there is no time to waste, and that dialogue should start as soon as possible. He stated, I insist on dialogue. The President has undertaken an initiative for dialogue and we have supported it without hesitation. We are willing to sit at the table without conditions. The Parliamentary Conference of Chairmen convened on Thursday to officiate the beginning procedures for electing the new President of the Republic of Albania. The Assembly Speaker, Mr. Ilir Mehta, announced at the beginning of the plenary session that the conference chairman unanimously decided to set the first session of voting for the presidential candidates on April 19th at 6 p.m. Regarding the new president, the Prime Minister said that the Socialist Party and the Socialist Movement for Integration are planning to propose a candidate who will be acceptable by all. According to the Prime Minister, the country is not going through a political crisis, but a crisis of the Democratic Party. On the 56th day of the opposition's protest, the former Prime Minister, Salih Berisha, declared that the Prime Minister cannot resign as the criminal gangs will not allow him to. Mr. Berisha claimed that the Prime Minister is a hostage of crime and said that video recordings exist showing Eddie Rama asking gangs for money, saying, do not create illusions. The crimes he has committed do not allow him to resign. The criminal gangs do not allow him because they have recorded him asking for money from them. Let's remove Eddie Rama, his criminal organization, and the government, said Berisha, who then called on citizens to prepare to take the protest for removing Eddie Rama to another level, though he did not specify the means. The former prime minister also spoke of a senior European official who, according to Berisha, has used the EU institution's name to convince opposition parties to take part in the June 18th elections, telling them that they can take more offices if the Democratic Party does not participate. The former Prime Minister said that the DP allies are at the protesters' tent by their own will, and he issued this call to the EC. Take this person away from the Commission. Remove corrupt people from the Commission. This is a shameful act that does not help either the Commission or the country he is from. Ditmir Bouchadi, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, responded to the DP leaders, their statements calling them shameful and a consequence of panic by the corrupt who are afraid of the justice reform, saying, for the first time in 27 years, there is a campaign against the U.S. ambassador and representatives of friendly countries. There have been no shameful statements made in the last 27 years until the ones we heard made by Lulzambasha yesterday and Sali Barisha today. In fact, these statements clearly express the panic some Albanian politicians have for a reform which will significantly improve the functioning of the law institutions and the rule of law in Albania. The Socialist Party also reacted to the statement saying that Basha and Berisha are trying to block the vetting process and do not have a plan to offer Albanians apart from violence and threats. The Socialist Party vowed not to allow the Democratic Party to block the path towards Europe or return Albania into chaos and illegality. DP chairman held a meeting with his allies and the opposition parties have decided to send a letter of complaint to the European Commission in disapproval of Edward Auer, the European Parliament head of the Division for Enlargement. Democratic Party allies claim that the European diplomat asked them to participate in the elections, emphasizing that they can receive more mandates if the Democratic Party is not participating in the elections. The opposition plans to ask the European Commission to take measures against Edward Auer as, according to them, this is unprecedented. Lulzambasha also held a meeting today with chairman and secretaries of DP branches 
asking them to mobilize for the election protest being planned for May 7th in Kavaya. There are 3,455,775 voters registered to vote on June 18th. And the OSCE ODIHR mission is sending 30 long-term and 300 short-term observers to monitor the process. The OSCE is, is emphasizing that the opposition parties threatening to boycott the elections is creating a tensed climate before the elections and that the voter and candidate registrations need more attention. The OSCE also says that caution should be taken while administering the elections, including being careful of vote buying, pressure on public administration employees, media coverage, implementing the rules for party funding, and with the treatment of complaints. Chairman of the Socialist Movement for Integration, Ilir Mehta, attended a meeting with women in Tirana's administrative unit number seven, where he declared that Albanian politics need a substantial transformation of individuals as well as the culture. Mr. Mehta said, the culture we are looking for is one of a political class that works as a team and works with responsibility. The political class should aim for the benefit of the public and put their country's interests above their individual interests. During his speech, the SMI chairman said he was convinced that a chance given to a woman is a chance given to a family. Mr. Mehta said, the socialist movement for integration works to give a chance to everyone, but we are convinced that when the chance is given to a woman, a chance is given to the whole family because social peace begins with the family and then spreads to society. In our program, the support and empowerment of women represents a special and extraordinary priority. The Albanian parliament has approved a law to facilitate the construction of the iconic Tower of Tirana. With 78 votes, parliament adopted the law to negotiate with the Al Haptur Business Investment Group a prestigious company registered in the United Arab Emirates with its headquarters in Dubai. The president of the Al Habtour Group, Khalif Ahmed Al Habtour, is one of the most famous businessmen of the United Arab Emirates and runs one of the most successful golf companies. The Albanian capital of Tirana will soon be identified with a giant 350 meter high tower on Tirana's new boulevard, providing luxury and high class services in the heart of the capital. The tower is expected to be completed in three years, giving Tirana a new architectural icon and providing thousands of jobs. The project was approved by the Albanian deputies after being discussed in the parliamentary committees and with the Minister of Economy, Ms. Milva Economy, who gave their approval. Sources close to the government say that the iconic Tower of Tirana, as it is named, will be divided into residential houses, hotels, and administrative services. Thanks to the investment of the Al Habtour Group, Albania is guaranteed to be introduced on the map as one of the prestigious investments of the Al Habtour Group. The Constitutional Court reviewed the request of Albanian Helsinki Committee today, a request to repeal three articles of the decriminalization law, which denies some convicted people the right to vote. The committee representative said that the articles are unconstitutional and that they should be rejected. She said that the decision to appeal the law was also driven by the complaints of the convicted who do not have the right to vote for their representatives in parliament and in local government. But the parliament and government representatives asked for the withdrawal of the Albanian Helsinki Committee's request claiming that the purpose of the articles are the imposition of moral standards in the electoral process, which are also found in 10 other countries. After hearing the claims of both parties, the judging body withdrew to make their decision regarding the appeal. That's all for our English edition this evening. Please join us again Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. For your local news in English, my name is Mari, and on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.